my text. Louder, ah, okay, okay. Good evening. Good evening. So glad to be back here. And kamusta na po ang young people na tumagete? May tao. I believe you're okay, but how do you define okay? Anyway, I'll be teaching about training for greatness. So, yung, um, kailangan may tindihan natin, we, the moment we have received Jesus Christ, the Lord planted in us that seed. And that seed is potential pa lang yan. Okay? So, hindi yan lalabas until the Lord make it grow. Okay? So, importante, paano po ba niya pinalalago yan? Importante po na uh, many are called. You're many right now. But the question is, sino kaya sa inyo pinili? Okay? So, what does it mean to be chosen? So, sabi sa Matthew 20, verse 16, So, the last will be first, and the first will be last. So, many are called, but few are chosen. So, very clearly, not everybody is called, but few. Okay? Many are called, few are chosen. Bakit few? From many to few. Okay? Kasi nga, maitindihan natin na Isaiah 48.10 Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Sa amplified version, dito ko po nakita because I'm using an amplified version. Behold, I have refined you. So, pinupuro, no? But not as silver. I have tried and chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Meaning, lahat ng tinawag niya, many, yung many na yon, Dadaan lahat yan sa apoy. To purify us from wrong motives. So, kailangan, ang importante, sabi niya, I have tried and chosen you in the furnace of affliction. So, lahat ng mga tinawag niya, okay, tinawag niya, idadaan niya sa apoy to determine who will be the chosen ones. So, doon lalabas ngayon, itetest pa rin ng Panginoon yung seed na nagtanim sa bawat isa. Sino kaya doon ang pananatili? Sino kaya doon magpapasako? Sino kaya doon ang talagang handa ang mag maging humble? Kasi ang pinakamahirap is humility. Okay? So, ano po ba yung furnace of affliction? Furnace of affliction means humiliation. Lahat yan, dadaan tayo, ibabaksak tayo, yung, yung confidence natin na magaling tayo, gifted tayo, aalisin sa atin yan. Okay? Kaya nga, yung furnace of afflictions means humiliation. Maraming humbling process ang Diyos. All whom God calls will Go this experience until pride dies. Kasi lahat tayo meron yan. It's a constant process ng Panginoon talaga. Gagawin niya ang lahat para yung pride na yan will never get in a way for you to be great. You can never be great when you're proud. Only humble people may possibility maging great. Because your greatness is not based on your accomplishment, not even based on your gifts, not even based on how much you know the Bible. It is based on how much you're willing to let God make you whom He wants you to be. And it takes humbly process for us to die to self para mangyari yung gusto ng Diyos. In my life, I'm... At first, na-establish ako sa relationship ko kay Lord more than ministry. So don't aim to have a ministry, aim to know God first. What's the ministry if you don't know what, the one whom you're serving? So it's an empty ministry. Many stop at the process because they say no to them to self. Maraming hindi kaya. Kaya sabi ni Jesus Christ, the road is narrow and only few finds it. Imagine, when the Lord showed me this verse, sabi niya, many will try, 
but we're not able, only few. You know what I said to the Lord? Count me in. I really challenged myself, count me in, without realizing what I'm going That this is the life, a life of suffering. Training process will never end. Until now, I'm under training. Will never end. Because we are so imperfect and we are so limited. And there's so much things to know about God and to know God. Kaya importante, hindi natatapos ang training. It's a lifetime process. As long as you are here on earth, God is in the business of training and preparing us for great things. Ang great things, hindi yan nakukuha ng isang one-time big time. You, you experience great things from God, you receive great things from God, another level na naman yan. Ipipreak mo na naman, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, until what? You learn to walk on the water. The kind of faith that God wants to achieve in every one of us is for us to have a faith that will really walk on the water. And it takes a painful process to achieve that. Because God will empty us of everything that we depend on, to hold on, even our dreams, our plan, our desire. He will break your Lord. First Peter 5, 6, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. So, ang exaltation, promotion, must come from God. Hindi sa atin, hindi man even sa tao. Due time means God will exalt you in time you are capable of handling what He is about to entrust you. Kaya kung matigas ka, matigas ang kalooban mo, ang tagal ng proseso. Minsan yung wilderness na dapat ganito lang kahaba, ang haba-haba na why? Because you are not capable of receiving what God has for you. Because God loves us and He wants us na pagtinanggap natin yung, gusto, yung plano ng Diyos, yung pagpapala ng Diyos, may puso tayong handa magpasakop sa Kanya. Because without the heart for God, all the things that we receive from God will destroy us eventually. And God doesn't want us to be destroyed. Kaya everyone will go through the process of training and preparation. Remember, King Saul and Solomon had an easy life. And yet, kita naman natin ang ending. Everyone will go through wilderness, painful experience, so we will last. Dahil sabi ng Panginoon, to those who endure to the end will be saved. Luke 2, 52, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Ang formation, grew in God, spiritual aspect. The very first thing you aim is lumago kayo spiritually more than in the ministry. Grew in man, character aspect. Kailangan po may character ang bawat isa naglilingkod sa Diyos. Hindi pwedeng walang character because no matter how gifted you are, when you lack character, you destroy what you're going to build. Hosea 2, 14 to 15, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, Israel, and bring her into the wilderness. So who brought will Israel to the wilderness? It is God. Wilderness is a time wherein God will empty us, humble us. And I will speak tenderly and to her heart, there I will give her vineyards and make the valley of Acor troubling to be for her a door of hope and expectation. Meaning, when we go through a valley, that is where God wants us to grow. No one grows in the mountain top. It grows in the valley. And he shall sing them and respond as in the days of her youth, as a time when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Remember, God desires in times of wilderness, in times of darkness, this is where God wants us to grow. Dito tayo lalago. Walang lumalago sa mountain top. Wala lumalago sa comfortable life. Wala lumalago sa convenience. Everyone grows in the dark. 
Because this is where we learn to depend on God. God wants every servant of Him to be broken. I shared it this earlier. Job was commended by God. He's a righteous man. And yet why does he have to go through that painful experience, suffering? Why? You may be righteous, but you're not broken. God cannot use you. God can only use a broken vessel. A broken vessel means emptying of yourself, of everything that you're holding on, even your very desire. And God will break you. Even Saul, before he became Paul, he was known to be knowledgeable about the Torah. And yet, God has to break him. Why? Because those times that is full of knowledge, he was not used. But when times he gave up all that he knew, and then consider it <coughs> rubbish. Anong ginawa niya? Sabi niya, I consider them rubbish. You see, God wants to empty us of everything that we hold on. Yours your schooling is just part of training. Remember Moses. He was schooled in the best in Egypt. He was the priest. He was groomed to be in the throne. And yet God has to remove him so he can be used. Kaya kailangan ini-empty natin. You know what? I shared this yesterday. I'd rather have divine authority than Bible knowledge. I may have, I know the Bible without divine authority, it will not impact people. But when I have divine authority and much, and, uh, no, uh, partnered it with knowledge, Bible knowledge, then I can really be a blessing to the body of Christ. In what you have, you must marami ka yung alam, hapuli nyo, kilala nyo si Christo. So, and dito po, wilderness is a season of dark night of the soul. Amount of dark night depends on how much we are willing to cooperate with God. With the adjustment we are willing to make. Kaya nga sabi niya, Hosea 10, 12, So for yourselves, according to righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God, reap according to mercy and loving kindness. Break up your uncultivated ground, for it's time to seek the Lord, to inquire and of Him, to require His favor, till He comes and teaches you righteousness and raises His righteousness, gift of salvation upon you. So, ano po ibig sabihin? Break up your fallow ground. Your heart. Minsan yung marami ka ng alam, bitawan mo yun. Meron kasi marami lumalapit sa akin yung people. Ang dami na nilang na-accomplish sa ministry. And they are praying for, sabi nila, many times, okay? Lagi nila, when they will meet me, uh, sagi sila, sabi nila, Pastora, tulong ka ni God, big blessing ka. Kasi we've been praying for mentor. So, nung mini-mentor ko na sila, hindi nila kinaya. Bakit? Kasi, gusto silang i-humble ni Lord eh. Narating na lang yung level of accomplishment, kala nila okay na sila. Kasi sa akin, when I will mentor someone, I will ask you, hubarin mo lahat ng alam mo. Start from the bottom. Why? Kasi ang malaki sa atin, ang yabang natin sa dami natin na accomplish eh. Isa na yung pag-iayama ko sa inyo, kilala ko si Kristo. Because eternal life is all about John 73, this is eternal life, to know you, O God, and to know the one who said. So that is eternal life. So a lot of people believe that eternal life is living forever, but there are people living forever in, in hell. So eternal life can be experienced here, is knowing God. Kailangan, maunungaan natin, before ma-establish ka sa ministry, kilalanin mo muna si Kristo, ang Diyos. Without a relationship with the Lord, serving God is empty. You're living under the sun. It's vanity. Kaya importante, we live under heaven. Why? The purpose of God. We can never know God's purpose in our life without knowing God's will because the righteousness of God is His will, His ways, and His righteousness. Meaning, yung tatlong yan dapat kompleto. Ibig sabihin, hindi sapat na tayo alam natin ang kalooban ng Diyos. Kailangan alam din natin ang kanyang paraanan. Mga young people, ang mga paraanan, sinapol ko to 
yesterday, minsan na may apang pa tayo pag kumakain tayo sa mga fast food, nagpe-pray pa tayo kasi sabi ko, Christian, nagpe-pray before eating. Pagtapos kumain, iiwanan yung table ng kalat-kalat. So, saan ang waste doon? Importante sa Panginoon, having integrity. What you say, when you say yes, it means yes. When you say no, it means no. When when the effect says you will be here on time, be here earlier. You become different. Kaya importante, integrity, honesty, and credibility. Now, nagukulat po ako, ito po ang lagi ko minimension sa mga congregation eh. Pag nagtatanong po ako sa congregation, sino po dito ang hindi na nagsisinungaling? No man will raise their hand. Just to inform you, the first recorded sin in the Bible is lying. And the last recorded sin in the Bible is lying. Don't take lying casually. Because ang sarap po ng kausap kristyano, dahil ikaw hindi ka nagsisinungaling, believe yung kausap ko hindi rin nagsisinungaling. Hello, young people. If you do not learn to tell the truth at your young age, magiging father niya. Ngayon pa lang, i-practice nyo na to be truthful in all things at all times. Amen po ba? Amen. Mahina. <laughs> Wilderness experience removes personal agenda. Yan ang aalisin. Isa pa sa aalisin ni Lord, personal agenda. God will break us so He can remake us to remove personal agenda. At tanong mo lang kasi, sabi nga kanina sa kanta, I will seek you. Hindi naman masama magplano. Ang hinihingi lang ng Panginoon, lumapit po tayo sa Kanya magtanong, yung plano ko po ba, plano mo rin? Kasi kahit napakaganda ng plano mo, kung hindi mo kasama ang Diyos, it's all vanity. Just like Solomon wrote, everything is vanity. Why? Why is it everything with all his wealth, with all his wisdom, with all his women, and still he considers life as a vanity because he lived under the sun. Meaning, he lived for himself, not in according to the purpose of God. Living under God, meaning you're living under his purpose. That makes life fulfilling. Hebrews 4, 9 to 10, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from His. So, ibig sabihin, the more you experience rest of God, then you have greater faith. Lahat po sa buhay kristyano progressive. You progress in the peace, the joy, security, fulfillment, satisfaction, and rest. Pag ang kristyano restless, ibig sabihin, he has not found a relationship with the Lord. Kaya nga, marami nagsasabi na at the end of the day, pagod na pagod na ako sa buhay ko, pagod na pagod na ako sa kakatray, pagod na pagod na ako sa bahay namin. Why? Kasi when we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit will really pull us towards His will. And then, ano mangyayari? Then tayo, meron tayong stubborn will, gusto rin natin. Kaya may tension inside. Kaya at the end of the day, napapagod tayo kasi gusto ng Diyos dito, pero gusto natin doon. Kaya may tension. So the moment you enter into rest, meaning lahat ng gusto mo, isi-surrender mo, so your will will be aligned to His will, you enter God's rest. And it is progressive because hindi yan one time, big time, dahil marami siyang ipapasuko, pero everything is progressive. Everything will grow. Ang napapansin ko rin sa buhay ko, the more I enter into rest, the more I have faith, the more I get to know the Lord, the more ang buhay ko, paganda ng paganda, pabuti ng pabuti, at paginhawa ng paginhawa, even without trying. 
Because seek you first his kingdom and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, God will add it. Tadagdag lang niya na itadagdag dahil inuuna mo ang kaharian niya sa buhay mo. So what is in your life na hindi pa siya nagahari? Yun ang saliksikin mo. Nakihimik ba? Dark value will disconnect us from our history and gain the path of our destiny. Kailangan yung mga pas bitawan na. Di ba sabi ni Paul? Forgetting what is behind and press on. Press on towards the goal of which Christ has called me. To take hold of why He has taken hold of me. So ibig sabihin, I will press on to my life, to the destiny that He has for me. I will take hold. Aangkinin ko kung bakit inangkin ako ng Diyos. Bakit ako pinili? Kailangan mapanghawakan ko. Kailangan maranasan ko. Kailangan maipamuhay ko. Bakit mo ko pinili? You have to determine that. The Lord, am I the chosen one? Or am I just the one who are called? Part of many called. Don't settle for anything less, mga kapatid. Mga young people. Satan will use our history of failures to manipulate our thinking. Kaya mag magdalas, di ba ang dami mga insecure na young people, even adults, maraming insecure. Kaya ang sabi niya sa Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. So yung opinion nyo, medyo itabi-tabi nyo. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you. So, practice yourself to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Start from baby steps. Hindi, ano, uh, malaki yan kagad. Yung umpisa tayo sa baby steps, maliliit. When you hear God, obey. Because that's the measurement, that is the evidence that we trust God. Without obedience, that is not faith. Being in the ministry does not mean that you have faith. Faith is manifested through our obedience. How do we know that we have faith? Because we heard from God. Without hearing God, faith will not activate. Why? Anong substance mo? Anong evidence mo? Na magtitiwala ka sa Diyos kung hindi mo siya naririnig. At kung hindi mo siya naririnig, there's no path to obedience. Why? Wala kang naririnig eh. Amen mo ba? And usually, God starts us with general will. Bakit general will? Kasi He will wait for us to be mature para kasi pag mature na tayo, then He can give us His specific will. Dahan-dahan. Ito muna, anak. Ito muna. Mga general yan. Madadali. Darating ang time, pahirap na ng pahirap. Bakit? Kasi pasikip na ng pasikip ang daan. Ang narrow road, wala kang pwedeng bitbitin, kundi ang cross. Any body just cannot enter a narrow road. You have to remember that. Kaya nga, with all your heart, rely on Him to guide you. And He will lead you in every decision you make. The question is, am I willing really to obey God? Kasi doon pa lang, pag walang willingness, then, Marami po sa atin, hindi magtatanong, hindi magsasiliksik kasi ayaw natin from the start, ayaw natin bitawan yung gusto natin. When you come before God with that kind of attitude in your heart, God will not speak to you. Kasi alam niya eh, pag nagsalita siya, may accountability ka, ang mangyayari, nanarinig mo na siya. Paano yun? Become intimate with Him in whatever you do and He will lead you wherever you go. So it takes intimacy with the Lord to hear from Him and to really obey God. This means walking in God's ways. Remember the Israelites experience, witness the power and the miracle of God and yet only Moses knew the ways of God. Alam niya ang paraanan. Kaya nga, 
Sabi dyan sa Isaiah 42.24, Who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? Was it not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, nor were they obedient to his law. When we do not walk in the ways of God, that's an open door for the enemy to devour us. Matthew 6.33, But seek, aim, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. His righteousness means his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides death to self and selfish ambition is the calling of God to you young people. The question is, are you willing to give up your ambition? Kasi kung hindi, itapusin na natin yung mensahe. What's the point? Tama? Kasi, ang message is all about death to self and selfish ambition. Eh kung hindi nyo kaya yan, di bakit pa kayo gusto makinig? Yeah, we are not But, upo na lang yung mga gusto makinig. Righteousness cleans the pipe of our being so God can flow through us. You know why God wants us broken and that we live in righteousness? Because He can flow through us freely. Amen. Kasi ganito yan, if you lack righteousness, you have the imputed righteousness of Christ. Pero hindi yan imparted, hindi yan totoo sa inner life mo. <coughs> The anointing, para ano yun eh? <clears throat> Example. Okay? This is a bottle. Ang anointing, pag nag-pour ka ng water, mag-flow. Tama? Sino mag-bless? Yung nasa labas. Pero pag ikaw nasa inner life mo, yung loob, unang-una, rivers of living water may flow. Kasi nagmula dito. The anointing can be upon because you lack righteousness, you do not know God, God may use you, the anointing will be upon, it can serve, it can bless one person, two individuals, but when you have the anointing within, then rivers of living water will flow, then many will be blessed. Kasi nagmumula sa loob. That's why he wants his vessel to be broken, to be filled with the righteousness inside. The inner life matters before God more than the external life. Important is a just what is inside more than what is outside. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, pwede kayong gamitin kahit worldly kayo, pero hindi kayo tatagal. Darating ang time when you lack consecration, even the world and temptations will pull you out of God's will. Hello? Kaya nga dapat you strive, you strive, you strive. Hindi walk in the park of Christian life. It is a battle from the first day. I have to battle against Satan. I have to battle against the world. I have to battle against myself. Why Satan when he's already defeated on the cross? Because Satan is seeking whom he may devour. Meaning, naghahanap lang yan na kung sino pwede siyang bigyan ng buwang para lampasuhin ang buhay ng isang anak ng Diyos. But he will never override our will. He needs our cooperation. And yet, wow, how many Christians live defeatedly because he cannot overcome his stubborn will. Second, world. Very attractive a world. Diba? Makita po ba natin ngayon ang hatak ng mundo through gadgets? Through media. Ang lakas ng hatak niyan. Do you choose to study the word o mag-ML? Do you choose to really seek God or mag-FP na lang? Malakas ang hila ng mundo. 
every day you have to deny yourself. And the last is to deny ourselves. Yan ang pinakamahirap i-overcome. The will. Righteousness cleans the pipe or by being so God can flow through us. Anointing may flow around us. If we lack righteousness, it will have little impact. But when God flows through us, means greater impact. Remember, okay? Marami pong ginagamit ng ministers ngayon and God is answering, even moving in the midst. But that's not really an evidence that God is pleased. Why did I say that? Remember, Moses was commanded to speak to the rock the second time because the first time he struck the rock. Yan ang instruction. The second time, sabi ng Diyos, speak to the rock. E napikong siya eh. Pinalo niya twice pa. So, na-displease ang Diyos. Right? You know the story? Hindi ba nag-flow ang water? Nag-flow? Bakit? Eh kasi God wants to bless the people. Kaya nag-flow pa din. Pero ang nangyari kay Moses, hindi nakapasok sa promised land. So, our service to God, God may move but does not eh, prove anything. Because at the end of the day, you, who you are, when no one is looking, your personal relationship with God matters. Yun ang ipagyaman ninyo, yung relationship nyo kay Lord. Huwag yung maging magaling kayo. Secondary na lang yun, okay? So, when God gives us a command, He requires obedience, and for us to obey, we take risk, take action. I mentioned it yesterday, sabi nga, faith is a substance and evidence of the things we hope for. Kalahati lang yan. Bakit? Ano yung kalahati? Ang evidence ng Diyos sa buhay natin is our action of obedience. That's why sinasabi ko, when we do not seek God, we do not hear from Him, then we do not have an obedience. Saan ka sasabihin mo, masunurin ka? When was the last time, tinanong mo si Lord, anong gusto mo? Kung wala tayong naririnig, hindi tayo makasunod. Then we live our life continually according to our will, to our ways, at sa ating gusto. Kaya nga sabi ni John 14, 21, to those who have my commands, and obey them. You see, una-una, to those who have my commands, and obey them. Hindi pwedeng I obey you without hearing from you. Kailangan, importante dito, na narinig muna natin para may basis tayo na may susundin tayo. At pag narinig natin, it takes faith because it will risk us. It will take risk. Then, obey. Ano sabi niya? Ito yung evidence na mahal natin ng Diyos. Kasi kahit sabihin natin, mahal natin ng Diyos, pero tayo pa rin ang nasusunod sa buhay natin. Hindi love yun. A rather, a small thing can steer the ship, but if it's not moving, then there's no use of a rather. Take action. Sufferings are not punishment, but preparation for promotion. Do not quit. You will eventually win. No promotion without breaking. Test to see if you will handle, handle what is to come. Kaya importante, magpabasag tayo. God can never use a broken, if it's not broken, vessel. Gusto niya basag. To the degree that you are unbroken is the degree you depend on yourself. God holds us in a shorter leash. We judge ourselves on the basis of God's value, not our own fears. Napansin ko po, pag lumalago po ang mga kristyano in my life, una, mahaba ang tali. Leash. Alam niyo naman siguro, if you love pets, you may no walk niyo yan, ang haba-haba ng leash. So, yung aso nagwawala kasi may freedom siya eh. Tama? So, ang gagawin niya, yung owner, iiklian niya para may control siya. Ganon din ang nangyayari sa atin. Pag 
structure tayo, iniiklian na ni Lord yung tali para konting mali, kinukol niya attention natin. Ang pinakamasakit sa buhay kristyano, when God gave up on you. Sasabihin natin, pagka pagka ginejudge ni Lord ng isang tao, puro punishment, puro suffering, hindi. Baliktad. If when I studied Romans 1, I I I realized when man gives up on God, God gives man over. Meaning, ibibigay na niya yung gusto niya na tao. When God establishes us on our stubborn will, that's it. We will live our life until the end on our own will and our own way. Kaya nga ang sagi ko ng example is si Jacob and Esau. Jacob, I have loved, and Esau, I have hated. Why? Mahal niya si Jacob, pero he has a difficult life. Esau has a very, very comfortable life. Why? Because the hatred of God is manifested when He establishes you on your stubborn will. But as long as He loves you, He will manifest it by continually intervening, interfering in our life until we are established in His purpose. Yun yung sinasabi niya, wala nang makakaagaw sa iyo. Why? Because sabi, doon sa John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Yun po ang gusto ng Diyos. To hear Him, so, may nagtanong sa akin, paano po ba namin naririnig ang Diyos? Paano ko nang naririnig? It's not an audible voice, okay? It is impression, discernment. That's why you get to know the Lord through the Word. Importante po, babad ang bawat isa sa salita ng Diyos because today, deception is very prevalent. Do not look for a prophetic word. Look for the will of God in the Word. Many run after prophets because they want to hear the, the prophecy. Don't look for prophecy. Wag kang mag-umasa sa tao, umasa ka sa salita ng Diyos. Let God speak to you because sabi nga niya, upon this rock of revelation, ano yun? I-reveal niya sarili niya sa atin lahat. Doon niya tayo itataguyon hanggang tayo ay maging matibay dahil nagpapakilala siya sa atin. In knowing God, then we can be established. Purpose of testing. Wilderness to deal with sin in our lives. Dark nights to remove personal agenda. Removes capability of doing God's way like Daniel's ten. So, nakita natin si Barnabas and si Paul. Notice about trend of Barnabas, a prominent early church leader, fondly nicknamed son of encouragement is that he seeks out and assists others. The biblical text highlights this twice with Saul and Paul, once concerning the vibrant church in Antioch and Syria. Si Barnabas, ano siya, may open-handed attitude. Open siya, friendly siya. Okay? Even very, ano siya, open-handed attitude towards material wealth. Kasi talagang binigay niya during when the time comes when the apostles was really uh, challenging everyone. Siya pa yung unang tumulong kay Saul kasi nobody's taking Saul. So makita may personality ni Barnabas. He was with Saul until Saul become Paul. So imagine, close sila. Close sila. The Spirit appointed Barnabas along with Saul. So makita natin sino nag-appoint at nag-ordain? The Holy Spirit. Hindi tao, the Holy Spirit. Kaya lang ngayon, bakit ang churches, kung sino-sino nalang ina-appoint without the leading of the Holy Spirit? Kailangan ng Holy Spirit na naglilid kung sino yung itlalagay, itatalaga. Okay? So, anong assignment nila? To bring the gospel to the Gentiles living in the Eastern Mediterranean region of the Roman Empire. Okay? So, dito po, nakita natin, they are very mightily used by God. God used Barnabas along with Paul to bring many Gentiles to faith in the serve in the Savior. So, nagawa sila ng missionary work. Okay? So, kaya lang may problema. Nagkaroon sila ng sharp disagreement. Bakit? Kasi si Mark, I believe the cousin of Barnabas, 
along their mission work, iniwan sila. So, ngayon, sabi ni Barnabas, after their mission journey, sabi niya, isama natin uli si Mark. Okay? Eh, sabi ni Paul, hindi pwede. Nagiiwan yan eh. Eh, kaya lang, kasi si Barnabas, you have to understand this, si Barnabas, sa personality niya, ano siya, people man. Okay? Para siyang uh, people person. Very, ano siya sa tao, very accommodating. Kaya lang si Paul, purpose-driven. That is the difference. Purpose-driven si Paul, people person si Barnabas. He values relationship, Paul values purpose. So kaya lang, ang gusto ni Barnabas, isama natin si Mark. Si Paul, hindi, purpose-driven yan, hindi. Madi-distract tayo kasi iiwanan na naman tayo along our journey. Nagkaroon sila ng sharp disagreement. Ano nangyari? Nagkaroon sila ng paghihiwalay. Okay? So, ano nangyari? Barnabas, inalisan si Paul. Okay? Consequently, while Barnabas returned to Cyprus with John Mark, Paul took Silas with him to evangelize Galatia. Why they parted? Barnabas wants to give Mark a second chance, but Paul was purpose-driven. When you are purpose-driven, secondary ang relationship. Kaya lang, ito yung pinakamahirap bitawan relationship. Minsan, may mga tao aalisin sa buhay natin dahil hindi tayo makakamove forward if that person is with us. Abraham and Lot, Nakita mo ba si Abraham na nag-aaway ng servants? Hindi silang dalawa yung servants. Okay? So, sabi ni Abraham, we need to separate. Pero look at the security of Abraham. Mamili ka. Ikaw mauna. Bakit ganun siya ka-confident? Kasi alam niya, tinawag siya. Pinili siya. You see, one thing, one aspect, when you are secured in the calling and the purpose of God, wala ka insecurity. Kaya nga lagi mo sinasabi, kayo na lang ang bida. Kahit ako na lang background. When you do not have insecurity because you're secure to what God is saying in your life. Pero hanggat natitreten ka sa kapwa kristyano mo, baka mas magaling, baka ma-promote, baka ganito, ganyan, you are standing on a shaky ground. The way to be founded strong is remove insecurity. The only way to remove insecurity is to hear from God and then follow Him. Iko-correct ko po ha. Kasi a lot of people, pag sinabi niya, ay may tawag ako, hindi po yun maging pastor, maging apostle, o prophet. Pag sinabi mong tinawag ka, ang unang-unang assignment, ang unang-unang task natin is to follow Christ. If you're not following Christ and you are nasabak sa ministry, magkakalat ka lang. Importante, sumusunod ako sa Panginoon dahil kahit ibaba ka, i-demote ka, apihit ka, secured ka, kasi alam mo kay Kristo, ano yung tawag mo? Ano yung tawag mo? Susunod lang ako. When God called me, my senior pastor na na-involved ako sa church, walang ginawa, apihin ako, i-demote ako, pero alam mo, saya-saya ko. Hindi ako na-insecure. Ine-reject ako lahat, ginawa na. Kasi people are blessed in my life, and yet, the elders, the pastors, are continually rejected me, maligning me, putting me down, and still, I'm a happy person. Why? Because my heart established in following Christ alone. Not ministry. Unahin niyo si Kristo. Kahit i-demote-demote kayo, kahit baliwalain kayo. Hindi ko alam na magkakaroon pala ako sa sarili kong ministry. See that? Why? I follow Christ. I never dream to have my own ministry. I never dream to go around the country. I never dream about that. I never dream to be a founder, to head a pastor. Wala akong training, wala akong Bible school background. I follow Christ because He is my wisdom. Amen. You see, 
Pag kinuso na po siya, nasabihin nila, oh, wala kang alam. Hindi, kilala ko yung sinyong paglilikuran ko. Kayo, marami kayo alam, pero hindi yung kilala yung pinaglilikuran niyo. Sino mas panago? Yung kilala si Kristo. Kaya mga young people, huwag ministry unahin. Ano unahin? Si Kristo. Sumunod. Magkaroon ng puso. Sumunod. Kaya makita mo, ano nangyari kay Barnabas? Nawala siya sa sin. Wounded spirit is not the same as offended spirit. Okay? An offense occurs when we do not process our wounds in a Christ-like manner. Offended spirit left unattended will manifest as hatred and cold love. Kaya maraming gulo-gulo sa part of Christ eh. Kasi maraming wounded. Bakit? Kasi insecure. Jesus links the real cause of apostasy not to wrong doctrines but wrong reactions. Right doctrine is important but if we have right information and still have a wrong response, this will still cause us to be offended. Bantayan nyo yung offense because God used that to break us. Proverbs 18.19, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Sabi dyan, Matthew 5.38.42, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. Whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to the other, to him also. Ano ibig sabihin? Hindi siya may paninira. Huwag mong depensa niyo sa rilipo. Huwag mong i-justify. Di ba masakit yun? Para bang chismis ka, sinaisiraan ka, pero sabi nila, manahimik ka. Kaya natin yan. Amen po ba? So if anyone to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Meaning, kung gusto niya ng position mo, ibigay mo. Huwag mo yung pag-iaman yung position mo, yung promotion mo. Sabihin mo, ay, taakin niya, bigay mo at turuan mo pa siya, i-assist mo pa siya. Yun ay tinangyayari sa loob ng ministry. Pag na-promote yung kalaban mo, sisiraan mo. Hindi, yung na-promote, yung sumisira sa'yo, tulungan mo pa, gumaling siya. Parang ayaw. Ayaw. <laughs> ayaw nyo. Hello? Di ba sabi ko nga sa iyo, we are training to be great. You can never be great if you're fighting for your right. Kaya ganun. So, these are the best. Kasi ito yung dinaanan ko. Nilalait ako, binabaksak ako, pero yung nalalagay sa posisyon, tinutulungan ko pa. Bakit? Secured ako eh. Bakit? Isa lang ang aim ko, si Kristo, hindi ministry. When you have that mentality, God can bring you far. Far beyond what you hope for and imagine. Pero when you fight for your right, I tell you, you'll not go far. You'll not endure. You will never persevere. Why? Because it's all about you. Foundation mo palang malina. Because this is all about Christ. Pag mali ang foundation, no one will last. Ang labanan, pati bayan, hindi patagalan, nasa loob ng ministry, hindi. Patagalan, pati bayan, sumunod at magpasakop kay Kristo. You can be in the ministry for so long without submission to God, then that's vanity. It's an empty ministry. Kaya nga sabi niya, whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you from him who wants to borrow from you and do not turn away. Huwag din kayo magpagamit ng mga two verse. Uy, sabi ko, eh, pautang mo, pautang naman. Hindi rin ganun, okay? Be wise. Kasi marami na malapit sa akin, binibigay two verse para huminiin. Okay? God allows all kinds of people to come into our lives so that Christ can function through us to minister life to them. How can Christ flow through us when we are full of bitterness and stubborn will and hardness of heart?
then we cannot impart life because we are full of ourselves. Just as Jesus is the bread of life, God wants our life to be bread to countless lives. Ibig sabihin, yung naranasan mo nung napakilala si Kristo sa iyo at binasag sa iyo, binago sa iyo, nagkaroon ka ng pag, uh, testimony, impart mo yan. Yun, pagkain ng tao. You become bread also. So if you have no testimony, ano yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa iyo? Anong sa isi-share mo? You're a clanging symbol. Nag-iingay ka lang sa ministry. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, when God released me in the ministry when, after calling me, then anong sanabi niya? Just follow me, Christ. Wala naman ako, you know, hindi ako mapapel. Basta may nagsasabi lang na, Tell, tell us about yourself. Nag-share ako. Na-bless ang mga tao. So sabi niya, huwag ka na magsasalita. Hindi, hindi na ako nagsalita. The more they keep me quiet, the more the life of Christ is manifesting. Why? Because I submit to a leader who hates me. Because before you become a leader, you learn to be a follower who respect the one who caused you pain. Kung laban lang ng laban na alam natin, wala kang pupuntahan. Dahil ang gusto ng Diyos, hanggang ditawan mo, karapatan mo, ay ang gusto mo, yan ay hindi ka magagamit dahil ang gusto ng Diyos, you empty yourself. Until lahat ng tao inaapakan ka na, dahil when the time comes, iaangat ka na. Huwag mong ipilit, ipromote ka. Let God do it because when God promotes you, no man can put you down. Never agree. God allows all kinds of people to come into our life so that Christ can function through us to minister life to them. Never agree with them, those who have a bad attitude or negative perspective in life, and never argue with them. Instead, recognize this as chance to let Christ minister through us His virtue in a needy world. Things that offend us. Bantayan nyo to. Offense. Ano yung mga bagay-bagay na kaka-offense sa atin? False expectation. When we expect people to meet our needs, we must find our security in God, not on man. When we put our confidence to God, we can live with per imperfect people. When God offends us, this is the worst offense. Kaya nga, di ba si Naaman? I, you know the story, si Naaman, commander of Syria? Then, meron siyang leprosy. So, pinapunta siya sa Israel kasi may nagsabi sa kanya, meron doon propeta na nagpapagaling. Anong ginawa ni Elisha nung pumunta si Naaman? Hindi niya nilabas. Eh si Naaman, okay, ina-expect niya kasi commander siya. Hello, anak commander, lumabas ka dyan. Eh hindi lumabas, inutusan lang yung servant din nila siya. So na-offend siya. Saan siya na-offend? Okay, ang offense niya, dito sa verse 11 sa 2 Kings 5 to 1 to 14, ay po, See? Una-una yan eh. Akala ko. Yung maraming akala, yan ang madaling ma-offend. Kaya kung ayaw mo madali kang ma-offend, bitawan mo yung mga akala mo. Eh, sanay tayo, nature natin yan eh. Akala ko. Eh, di ba statement natin? Akala ko kasi ganyan eh. Akala mo lang. Kaya for you not to be offended, Pinawin nyo, kunyari, meron kang ina-expect na tao tutulong sa'yo. Eh, hindi tumulong sa mga loob mo. Na-offend ka. Sa umpisa pa lang, Lord, kung kalooban mo to, you see, balik kay Lord. Kalooban mo to, tutulungan ako niya. Pero kung hindi, ibig sabihin, ikaw to. So, you see, sabi to, blessed are those who have pure in heart, they will see God. In every situation, lagi mo nakikita ang kamay ng Diyos. Kaya whether you are denied or favored, alam mo si Lord John. Huwag mong awayin yung 
kapwa mo pag ikaw ay tinatanghihan kasi ibig sabihin si Lord John. If you see God in every situation mo, mas magaan ang buhay. Kaya lang pumibigat kasi sa sama ng loob. Tama. Kaya alisin niyo yung akala niyo. Okay? So, humbly process before the Lord bibigay niya, i-humble niya muna tayo. Okay? So, He will deal with our pride. When we come to God desiring healing, He wants us not only healed but humbled. He humbles us so He can give us grace. Faith works through faith, but God gives grace to the humble. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, when we learn to humble ourselves, we should discover that offense was in reality a door that leads to God's power. When we study what Jesus taught, it is obvious that He came to make us unoffendable. Okay? Kaya dapat, tinuturuan din natin na emotionally stable tayo. You may have a high IQ when you have low EQ. Wag ko malaps din. One time, I counseled a couple na ikakasal ko. Isa, isa counsel lang sa lalaki, be emotionally stable. How do you know that if you're emotionally unstable? May temper ka. Madali kang mapikot. Napaka-oversensitive mo. Dali kang ma-offend. Hello? You see, when you have an unoffendable heart of love, overcome all adversities. So, pag tayo po, humingi ng prayer, Lord, I want to change. Okay, maraming prayer yan eh. Pagtapos ng seminar eh, Lord, gusto ko magbago. Kala mo ba makikarita ang situation niya? Nakakainisan mo. Bakit? Eh, yun yung way ni Lord eh. Lord, baguhin mo ko. Sige, magpapadala yan ng mga mang iinis sa'yo. <laughs> At pag nagpadala, sasabihin mo, Lord, baguhin mo siya. Hindi, ikaw. <laughs> ikaw humingi. Hindi naman yung tao eh. Ginamit lang yun eh. Kayo naman mo. Sasabihin mo, mali prayer. <laughs> you know, when uh, Lord, I want to change, to answer our prayer, He puts us in a situation that offends us. Okay? Para ano, madaliin ang pagbabago para may offend yung area na gusto niya mapagpagumpayan natin. Kaya, seek first kung ano yung sa kamahina. Sa kamahina, when it comes to attitude ng kapwa mo, mahina ka ba pag ini-ignore ka o yung KSP ka? Kailangan ma-overcome mo yun. Eh, paano ko nire-reject ka? Weakness mo yan, i-overcome mo yan. Lahat ng emotional baggages nyo at lahat ng emotional weakness nyo and instability, overcome it. Because once you're emotionally stable and strong, none of all this will move you. Amen. Hindi yung emotion mo ang magtatakda sa buhay mo, kundi yung spirito ng Diyos. Amen. Mostly, Christians are soulish. That's the problem. Kaya pag nagpe-pray, kala nila sinasabi ni Lord, di pala emosyon lang nila. He doesn't want us just to survive the adversity but to be Christ-like. Marami kasi nagsasabi, I survived the trials. Don't be a survivor, be a victor. A survivor na tapos ang pagsubok, walang nabago. Ang a conqueror and victor na tapos ang pagsubok, naging kawangis ni Kristo. So, kamusta po? Remember Joseph, the land of offense, become the land of power, anointing, and blessings. The destiny God has for a man unfolds or dies at the junction of offense. How we handle offense is the key to our tomorrow. Kaya, ano sikreto? Sa Psalm 119, Great peace have they who love your Lord, nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. Pag mahal mo ang salita ng Diyos, hindi ka madaling masaktan. Okay? So, look at this. Habakkuk 3, 17, 19. All of us will go through this. Though the fig tree may not blossom, 
nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like this feet and He will make my walk on my high hill. Okay. Ito po, ito yung when you're in the ministry, ito nararanasan nyo. Financial drought. Economic crisis. Darating ang time, ministry is not fruitful. Bakit parang nagdadry ka? Parang ka nanghihina? Bakit parang marami umaalis? All this. And yet, sabi ni ko, I will rejoice in the Lord. Whatever He allows in your life, let the joy of the Lord is your strength. Huwag kayong magalit. Eh, bakit umalis ito mga ito? Bakit nawala sa mga yan? Bakit ako kinalaban niya? Alam mo, God wants us meek. Whatever God allows, sabi nga natin, all things work together. Ano? Sinabi bang some? May sinabi bang many? Ano sabi? All. Ano? All. O, naitindihan niyo na. So, bukas na bukas, may mangyari sa'yo all things. <laughs> Kasama yun. Bukas may frustration ka, kasama yun. Bukas na inis ka, kasama yun. All things work. It will only be good if we submit to God and trust Him. At paano tayo magiging good? Nung sinabi ko kay Lord, how can it be good? 29. Whom He foreknew, He predestined to be more like Christ. It can only be good because ang ultimate goal ni Lord, lahat tayo maging kawakis na anak. Not ministry to be more like Christ. Then what else? Sabi nga niya, I will rejoice because the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and He will make my walk on my high heel. Ibig sabihin, sa gitna ng mahirap, pagsubok, madilim ang aking paligid, ang Diyos ay patuloy pinagtitibay tayo, pinibigyan tayo ng wisdom at ano pa, tayo po ay patuloy nagtitiwala sa Kanya. Alam mo, God wants us strong eh. Pinagtitibay lang tayo kaya may pagsubok eh. Alam niyo ba ang book of Job? Okay. Ang book of Job was written before, 500 before Moses. So ang unang-unang book ng Bible is Job. Bakit Job? Pero it was written, inuna siyempre in Genesis. Pero historically, ang unang book na, bi- na isulat, kasi Job, before Moses eh, bakit? Pinapakita ng Panginoon, our life here is defined by suffering. If you think that Christianity is a walk in the park, you're in the wrong religion. Christianity is all about suffering. If you cannot accept that, hindi ka tatagal. Kasi sabi nga sa Acts, I think 14, sabi niya, you are able to enter the kingdom of God through tribulation. Kung hindi ka makakapasok, na hindi ka nakakalanis dito. Okay? What else? Covetousness. Kailangan po matuto tayo magtiwala sa Kanya. God is doing something hidden. It is very quiet, but it is awesome. Si Lord kasi nire-raise up niya mga young people na yun. Ngayon. So if you believe that God is tugging you in your heart to be one of His many called and be tested to be chosen, huwag kayo matakot. Huwag kayo matakot. Bakit? Ay sino ba pinipili mo? Si Lord naman. Huwag kayo matatakot. Kasi wala na akong kanil. O bakit? Di ba kaya ibigay? Di ba kaya ibigay yan? Wala na akong love life. Di ba kaya ibigay yan? Minsan, kaya, minsan ang, alam mo yung nade-derail ng mga young people? Yung love life. Huwag kayong, gusto pag love life, magkare-react. Ano ba yan? It is very quiet but it is awesome. It is supernatural that will amaze the whole world. 
if he is preparing a very small army on the face of the earth who is devoted, pure, and fearless. So, sabi sa Daniel, Daniel 11.32, And such as violent covenant he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries, the, but the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits. The Lord is looking for young people who will know Him and do exploits in the last days. Because he, they will be entrusted with power, anointing, authority, and even wealth. But He is looking for broken vessels who is fully committed, pure, and fearless. Who will be naked before God. You know what? When Abraham was asked to offer Isaac, God allowed him to walk three days. Bakit? Bigyan siya ng chance mag-isip-isip. But he was resolute, determined. And God is looking for young people who are resolute, determined, and committed. And the road is narrow. These are made up of true, dedicated servants of the Lord, handmaids of the Lord, ordinary Christians. Hindi kayo special, ordinary lang. Okay? Kaya importante na huwag niyong isipin na darating ang time. You will be famous. Ayusin niyo yan. Huwag na huwag niyong i-build ang reputation niyo. The Lord commanded me when He was using me already. Ano sabi niya? Grace, never build your reputation. Iwan mo kay Lord ang reputation niyo. Okay? Kaya sabi ko, sige Lord, kaya sanay ka na siraan. Normal na lang yun. Okay? Kaya importante, so, we submit to God para sa ang Panginoon ay matuto, ay tayo po ay matuto magpasakop sa Kanya. In Psalms 45.7, sa conclusion, you love righteousness, okay? uprightness and right standing with God, and hate wickedness. Nakita mo anong key para maging above God? Therefore, God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. That's the key. You want to be above? You love righteousness and right standing with God. Yan po yung susi. Our response or reaction in our circumstances will determine the outcome of our future. Mga young people, I pray there's a lot of training to go through in life. We are being trained to be great. Not to be a commoner, but to be great is your choice. Kaya sabi dyan, if you want to be above, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Seek you first, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The very first thing, the important is a new covenant relationship came on. Establish first your relationship with the Lord, and all these things shall be added. Don't look for reputation, don't look for wealth, don't look for success, don't look for fame, and to be famous, look for the Lord, and you will find him with all your heart. Amen, Uba. Palakpakan po natin.